This is Aaron with Anet Computers from AnetComputers.com with an impromptu video. I wanted to discuss Skype. Earlier today, my Skype quit working. I was using Skype version 4.2, which as you can see, I've upgraded. And I kept receiving this message, Skype can't connect. Skype can't connect exactly as it's typed here. And I was certain that I was using my correct password because I had it enabled where Skype remembered my password and sign in and it would always automatically sign in even on Linux so what occurred was that the first fix I tried was to delete a local Skype directory and I found that off of this website on skype.com can't Sign in, Ubuntu 12.04. This was an older post, 2012, but I tried one of their quick fixes. Delete the home directory and then slash dot Skype. So that's what I tried, and I'll show you what command I would use. I'm not going to hit enter because I don't want to delete that folder because Skype works for me now. So I just, no point. But let me go over real quick. This is for Linux users. You have your home folder and then you have all these folders and files that might be hidden. So I typed it here. I can show you this command. ls minus al will show everything and that's what I did so you can see where I've highlighted the Skype right here as you can see it might be a little bit difficult to see but where my mouse cursor is it's dot Skype but with a capital S and it's case sensitive so then once again in the future you might have this problem so this tip might help you it did not help this specific problem I was having with Skype and I'll get to that that's why I decided to create this video because this problem just arose within the last couple of days and it has to deal with Skype so and I'll get to that but just in in the future if you watch this video and then I might write a blog post if I write a blog post about this I will make sure I put the URL to my website anetcomputers.com to the exact URL for the blog post in the video description so that you can quickly go to my website and then read over what solved my problem and then some other additional tips or steps that might help fix your issue. If it is a problem in the future where Skype isn't working, this is what you can try. You can delete your dot Skype hidden folder on Linux, it's in your home folder, and then it's a dot, and then capital S, K, Y, P, E. On Windows, it's going to be a little bit different. It will be your Skype folder in your user profile, Windows XP, documents and settings, and then your user folder, your, you know, whatever your username is, and then somewhere in there. Somewhere in your profile. Same thing with Windows 7, Vista 8. In on Windows 7, I think Vista and higher, it's C users. On Windows XP, it's C documents and settings, and then your profile. Same thing with the Vista 7.8, it's C users, and then your profile. Somewhere in your profile, you will have your Skype folder. You want to delete that folder. That just has settings. You don't want to delete Skype installation folder under programs. No. Or programs and features on Vista 7.8. No. Your Skype folder in under your user profile. That's where some of your Skype settings are saved. Same thing with L Linux. So I would... So to go over it on Linux, I'm using Ubuntu. You would... It's exactly the way I typed it. RM space 
minus sign or dash F R lowercase. Both of them are lowercase space dot capital S K Y P E. I'm not going to enter hit enter because I will delete that folder. That will completely remove that hidden folder. The dot means basically it's hidden. On Linux, a lot of folders are hidden. A lot of the profile folders for programs are hidden. You could do an ls minus l, it won't show hidden files. ls minus al will show everything. So I'll go over quickly what the f and the r and why I type this command in this way. rm will remove files on Linux. Well, the quickest way I've learned to remove files and folders, so what it will do is it will delete any files and subfolders within that folder Skype. That's why. I, that's what the F and the R is for. Files and then recursive. Files and folders recursively, meaning anything, any subfolders. That way, otherwise it can take you forever if you just remove files. If you don't type in the command correctly, you have to go into each folder, delete all the files, then go back up a folder, then delete. See, there's a security procedure with Linux where if you just use the rm command, you remove, it won't let you remove folders. That's why you have to delete all the files within the folder. Then it will allow you to remove that folder when all files are removed. Well, there's another command that will remove everything. It will remove that entire folder, any other files within it, and any other folders within it recursively. So be careful. This is a warning, I guess. If you're used to Linux, you know, but if you're not accustomed to Linux yet, just be careful with this type of a command because you want to make sure that you want to delete that folder because it deletes everything, everything out of there. So, so that I will show you that. I'm not then going to Skype. I want to show you that it works now and I want to show you that I upgraded. I upgraded it from Skype 4.2. I just upgraded it about, I don't know, 20 minutes ago. I was running Skype 4.2 on my Linux distribution. And then what I did was I typed in, I can show you that too real quick, an apt get. So I don't have anything else to upgrade because I just ran it about 20 minutes ago. But what happened was I found another... Oh, let me show you the tip first. Maybe that'll be easier for you. So I can close this website. It didn't help because that's what wasn't an issue. What happened was was that Skype... for what, I don't know why yet. I haven't looked into it yet, but Skype allegedly has blocked people from logging in with older versions of Skype. I was using 4.2, that's pretty new. And I was not able to log in with any of my Skype accounts. I ver I verified it. I'll show you that. I verified it. I'm already signed in. See, with this account, that's another tip. That's the second thing I tried. I was like, well, may I wanted to make sure whether... See, I thought maybe somebody locked my Skype account or you know what I'm saying sometimes that happens people will try to hack your account or even robots will go out there and you know whatever disable your account or try to sign in too many times or they forgot their account and whatever so I quickly went to skype.com and I signed in and I signed in successfully as you can see so it wasn't an issue with my Skype account that's another thing you can check is go out to skype.com and make sure that it's not a problem with your account that way you're not messing around wasting time thinking that it's your software see i almost was going to reinstall my software but i'm like wait a minute let's go out to their web interface and make sure whether or not it's an issue with my account now if it's an issue with your account that could be something else it could be locked or you mistyped your password too many times or I don't maybe you got your account disabled or I don't you know something like that but that's not the case with my 
problem. So I'll close this. And then I will show you that I can sign in now. So it's signing in, signing in. Notice how I didn't receive that error. And I typed, I added this to my update, my little profile. Skype 4.3 works because Skype 4.2 wasn't working for me. So as you can see, I was able to successfully sign in and I wanted to show you that. And then I wanted to show you this article or forum post on askubuntu.com. This is where I receive my information. As you can see, Skype can't connect. I received this exact same error verbatim with Skype 4.2 about a half an hour ago, not too long ago. After I restarted my computer to finish an upgrade, I cannot log in at Skype anymore. It only shows the message, Skype can't connect. If I try a web version, it works. I'm using Skype 4.2. That's exactly my same problem. I was able to log in with their web version but not with my Skype client and I was using the exact same version of Skype 4.2 and I was also using Ubuntu well here's where I found out this was yesterday try again Skype is working now so it seems like it was intermittent yesterday I just tried the problem remains the post about 4.2 being retired is probably the most correct yes allegedly they retired 4.2 I don't know that for a fact I haven't independently verified it with Skype, but I think that's possible. However, I'm on 4.2.0.13 and for whatever reason it still works. So maybe, maybe that's what it was. Maybe certain versions of 4.2 do not allow you to log in. I didn't, I didn't, I knew I was running 4.2, but I don't know now what exact version. Again, when I upgrade with Ubuntu, it automatically jumped to 4.3. It didn't even upgrade, you know, from 4.2.0.9 to 4.2.015, whatever. It automatically skipped the 4.2s and directly to 4.3. So it could be a, a bug or an issue with certain versions of 4.2. I just don't know. According to this post, Skype versions older than 4.3 are unable to connect as of today. As you can see the date, August 1st, 2014. Though it could have just been a temporary outage of the Skype servers, I was able to connect after updating Skype. I just updated to 4.3 following this link and it worked. Typical Microsoft. This link explains the instructions for insta installing Skype 4.3 on a lot of distros, including Ubuntu 12.04 till 14.04 for both 32-bit and 64-bit systems. I'm running a 64-bit system. So that was it. That was my fix. And that's what my YouTube video is about. Is My tip is that hopefully by you upgrading your version of Skype, I would even say Windows XP... Vista 7.8, try upgrading your Skype first. Well, you could try, number one, delete your Skype folder. If that doesn't fix your issue, number two, go to Skype's web-based version. Go to Skype.com and sign in and make sure whether or not it's a problem with your Skype account. If it's if you can able, you're able to sign in, that tells you that it's a problem with your Skype client. Number three, Try to upgrade your version of Skype if you're on Windows XP, Vista 7, 8, however you upgrade your Skype. If it's with your Windows updates or you could go directly to Skype.com. Here we could do that really quick. Skype.com, go to Downloads. Select Downloads and it's pro it, it'll detect I think that's what this website does it's detecting that I'm using Linux I'm signed in and it says Skype for Linux on your computer 
your Windows computer, XP Vista 7A, it should tell you Skype for Windows. But here, I can even choose my distribution. It, it detects that I'm running Linux, but it looks like it's not, you know, completely 100%, but that's okay. So you, then I click on choose another version, Windows Desktop, Modern Windows Mac. So I would say that if you're running Windows, you should be able to sign in or you don't even have to sign in. Just go to Skype.com, go to Downloads. It should detect your web browser, which and then it probably it should detect your operating system. Oh, you're running Windows, and then but it might have a drop down where it chooses choose your version of Windows. If you're running XP, choose XP or Vista or seven or eight, and then download a most current version of Skype. I don't know for a fact. I'm not gonna tell you that. Oh, I know for a fact that Microsoft shut everybody down that were using older versions of Skype from 4.2 all the way down and only 4.3 versions can work. I don't know that. I know for a fact that when I upgraded my version of Skype from 4.2 to 4.3, it worked. So I know that much. So try to upgrade your version of Skype. Hopefully that solves your problem, whether you are on Linux or Windows. And I would even say Mac. It's possible that you know, I would assume that if people can't sign in with 4.2 on Linux and Windows, how could they sign in on 4.2 with Mac? So also, you could try these tips if you're using Mac. Obviously, a way that you resolve your issue is a little bit different. You're going to have to, you know, however you delete your profile folder on Mac and then however you upgrade etc. So anyways, you can always browse to initcomputers.com for more potential tips and fixes to solve your most common computer problems. Thank you for listening.